Starting a project can be an intimidating thing. We see great projects and restorations all the time, but what if you've never done it before? How do you even find a project truck and how do you avoid this from happening? Well, what's the secret to making a complicated restoration a simple and manageable process? Well, we wanted to make this series about exactly that. How to find, qualify, purchase, and restore a popular 1990s OBS truck and step-by-step -step rescue it from whatever fate it was headed for. We're going to show you how to plan your way to success with your project. We're going to show you how to keep it on the road. So when you're looking for a project, where do you start? You probably have a good idea what truck you're looking for, and so do we. We wanted to get our hands on an OBS truck, an 88 through 98 Chevy, and the first generation of that body style, which is really quickly becoming the next big trend in truck restorations. Regardless of the truck that you want, the process we're gonna show you is about the same. We're gonna walk you through different ways to shop for a truck, how to vet it out, and once you find one that looks interesting, show you some great inspection techniques for when you're looking at it up close. But first, you gotta find a project. Now, a newspaper classified ad, well, it's a thing of the past, but we have the world at our fingertips on the internet. There are millions of vehicles for sale on the internet. The great thing about searching online is that you can usually find something really close to you. Typically what I do is start in my hometown and then expand the search if I'm not finding anything. Facebook has a marketplace. Then there's the typical internet auction sites, eBay, AutoTrader, Hemmings. Searching is also a great way to find out what the going prices are for what you're looking for. Now here's something to keep in mind. Just because somebody's asking a certain price doesn't mean that's the price it's gonna sell for. Don't get hooked into somebody asking a high reserve on an auction that they'll take much less. Make sure that you understand there's a difference between an asking and an actual sales price and cash talks. When you're looking around you find a car lot, it's a no-brainer. You've got unlimited access, they're wide open. If it's a private sale, make sure there's a for sale sign on the vehicle and, and you could leave a note if nobody's there. If it's a vehicle with no signs on it and you're not sure, well, always be respectful and mindful and don't trespass. So sometimes word of mouth is the best way to find a truck, especially in your local area. So we just put a message out to the local C10 Club, C10 Club of Tennessee, that said we're looking for uh, the truck that we want to find. It always helps to know what year, make, model, and style that you're looking for. So tell me a little bit about it. We got a message back from Brian who introduced us to a guy named Arnie who had a truck. He's an enthusiast, he specializes in these trucks, and he bought one for his daughter who drove it for a little while, outgrew the truck, and eventually wanted something different. The pictures look good, so we talked to him on the phone. And we made an appointment to go check it out. We packed up our truck, trailer and some cash and headed to Arnie's place to look at our 1989 Cheyenne short bed two-wheel drive that on paper looked like what we wanted. Now you don't need a whole lot of tools to go and inspect a vehicle but here's some things that I think are important. We've got a flashlight, here's a point-and-shoot thermometer, a couple of screwdrivers, some gloves and some bug spray just in case sometimes vehicles sit for a while and bugs can nest and there's maybe some ick. And we've got an inspection mirror, a vacuum hose, which I'll show you how to use later and what to use it for, some safety glasses, uh, a magnet, and the VIN decoder from the LMC truck catalog. Make sure you can inspect at your own pace without somebody distracting you. And take as much time as you need to inspect a vehicle. First, I always walk around and take it all in. Then I immediately look at the bed of any truck. You can tell a lot about the life a truck has led by the condition of the bed floor. This one actually looks pretty good. It helps to bring somebody with you that knows about the year and style truck you're looking for. <laughs> they might know problem areas or issues that you can't see right away. This area right here on these trucks particularly kind of caves in. It's due to the door design and the way that people close the door when the strikers start to wear out. This is not too bad and it actually closes okay, but the striker's kind of shot. A quick look at the interior shows a lot of wear and tear. 
little bit of body damage right here. It's really the only damage I see in the whole truck. It's not bad. Some surface rust right there. We can deal with that. The mag that I have is a refrigerator business card magnet that is quite weak. If it sticks, there's probably not any filler or fiberglass. Remember, a magnet won't stick to rust or plastic. This is a great way to see if the sheet metal is solid or if you need to dig in a little further. Rust happens in different places on every year and vehicle, but a common rust zone in these trucks is right around the wheel arches. The inspection mirror and flashlight help you to see the backside of the panel and get a good look at these zones. This tailgate will probably need to be replaced. But the front bed panel, it can be repaired. It being bent is not a deal breaker. So far so good on the body. There's no rust through. There's very little actual body damage, a few things here and there, but the paint is horrible. It's dead. That's not a bad thing. That means that it's probably the original paint job and it hasn't been covered up by a bunch of other paint jobs that might be covering up rust and other body damage, signs of collision damage. It's not a bad thing. So far, the bones are good. Now the owner tells me this is a factory 350 engine. That's what I want. I can confirm that with the LMC truck guide by looking for a K in the VIN. Yep, K coat, in good shape. Facebook user groups are a huge help when digging into the details. Post and ask questions, even as you're inspecting a truck. Most people really do want to help. Now you notice I didn't start the truck up. I don't want to. There's some things that you can check with an engine cold that are very important to know. The fill cap, there's a little bit of oil and debris on it, but it's not bad. It's not all crusty. And there's no sign of a bunch of oil and blow-by coming out of the cap. That's good. Oil on the dipstick looks good. Transmission fluid doesn't smell burnt. Still has a kind of a reddish color to it. Don't see any debris. That's pretty good. That's pretty clean. Level's a little low, but it's good. There's no corrosion. Battery cables are good not a lot of corrosion and the tray the battery tray is solid that's a good sign well, the fluid is it's dark but you can see through it that's that's good you don't want it looking black and you certainly don't want it full up to the top this could use a flush but we're in pretty good shape this is an aftermarket air compressor and it doesn't have a belt the compressor itself, well, it feels okay, but there's a lower pulley missing along with the V-belt. When I'm actually turning the compressor, I'm feeling for grinding or stiffness or it's stopping, and it's in pretty good shape. It spins okay. I bet it actually still works, but there's no belt, so we'll have to, we'll have to look a little further. Might still be good. All the box are checked off under here. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now we can start it up and see how it sounds. You want to listen for sounds on your initial startup. I heard a little bit of clatter, but nothing bad. So overall, it sounds pretty good, but the sound of the fan can actually disguise internal engine noises. That's where the vacuum hose comes in. This is basically, it's a uh, improvised stethoscope. So you put one end to your ear, and you can touch the other end, check for bearing noise. What it does is it amplifies the sound just like a doctor's stethoscope does and transfers it into your ear. Um, it just gives you an extra sense of what's happening inside that engine without actually breaking into it. This so far sounds good. Now the oil pressure gauge is kind of fluctuating. It's sort of weird, but if you average everything out, we're in and around 30 pounds-ish, which at idle on a cold engine, 30 to 40 PSI, that's, that's about right. So maybe the fact that there's not very much oil actually in the engine is causing it to fluctuate. Either way, we'll have to check the gauge out later. A couple of things you can check real quick with the vehicle running, steering. No weird noises, no whining of the pump. All right, brake pedal feel. It's a little soft, but it's not bad. So now we're gonna check the transmission. So it's in park. We're gonna hit reverse. Okay, neutral, drive. 
what I'm listening for is a lot of slop in that drive line. Universal joints, uh, possibly the differential, possibly the transmission. And I'm not hearing anything. So that solid sort of a clunk down feel, that's what you want to listen for, especially on a cold vehicle. As things heat up, they expand and they'll actually become uh, friendly with each other a little bit more so. But cold, you're really going to hear stuff if it's about to fail. Now with it running, starting to get warm, we're going to check and see if there's any smoke coming out of the tailpipe. Eh, not bad. Alright, so the heater controls, nothing works. <laughs> it, nothing works. However, the previous owner has got that. So at least there's a heater in it. And that's the AC switch. So they know this doesn't work. They didn't want to replace the factory thing. They've got a temporary fix on it. Okay, I get it. These vents are notorious for either being loose and sloppy inside the dash bezel or just breaking apart like that. Hey, we've got an owner's manual. That's really good. The other thing I'm noticing about the interior is the headliner is completely gone. We inspected the lighting and electrical systems and everything checked out. Looking under the truck, it wasn't bad. A few minor oil stains, but nothing too alarming. When I'm driving something for the first time, I'm feeling for things and listening for things. When I go for excessive play in the steering, it's not bad. There's no clunks and bumps. It feels like the shocks are a little wore out, but you know, it's 195,000 miles but it sits in the road pretty okay. Seems to upshift and downshift pretty well. The brakes are a little concerning, but they still work good. It's just a little soft. We're on a two lane road here. It sits in the lane good. I'm not fighting it. Let's we'll see what acceleration feels like. That's good. Upshifted nicely, kicked down into the other gear, released quickly. When the road's clear, when I know it's safe, I'm going to do a panic stop from about 30 miles an hour. I just want to see what this thing does. And here we go. All right. The rear brake's locked up like that. That's something we're going to have to adjust the brake bias on, because that could be dangerous on a wet road at a faster speed. So note to self, the heater core is, uh, is working. That's another thing. You're using your senses smell for the smell of antifreeze. Everybody knows what the smell of antifreeze is. It's a sweet, acrid smell, and we're not smelling that, but I'm getting hot air coming back from the vents. So that tells me that the heater core is not worn out or not leaking, and that's also another good thing, because that can be a very time-consuming fix if you have to pull the dash apart. It's gonna have some things wrong with it. So all of these points are gonna give me a little bit of leverage to get the price down a little bit. Me and the owner talked about the truck in a respectful but honest conversation. Be very careful with the title transaction. Every state is different with titles, and you don't want to get caught up in a mess if the truck has a lien on it or is not titled properly to the seller. We settled on a price that we were both happy with and traded cash for the signed title. He even helped us load it up and strap it down. I am really happy with what we found. It's a solid truck and we got it for a fair price and it's almost exactly what we wanted. And always remember, when you're buying something, there's emotions attached to these vehicles. And sometimes it's hard to let them go. You can be honest, but a little kindness while you're negotiating goes a long way. I'm stoked, we got a project back here and it's almost exactly what we wanted. Short wheelbase, two wheel drive, V8, overdrive transmission. Now I would have preferred the composite headlights and the silver out of trim package, but we got a solid truck and those are easy upgrades. We're gonna show you how to do them along with this complete restoration. We're gonna show you how to do it one step at a time with simple tools. So it's gonna be awesome and we got a good truck. When we picked this truck up, it was sitting in the dirt, and it's hard to tell if there's any leaks. So with it here in the shop, here's a low-budget way to tell if you got any drivetrain leaks and exactly where they're coming from. Just some clean cardboard underneath the engine, the transmission. Now 
the U-joints and the rear differential. That way you can just see where your drops are falling. You can tell what's leaking.